Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, February 2nd at midnight, 2020. The models are in. And as predicted, the snow is moving east. And as we enter mid-February, the models are getting insane. Wuhan virus is the big news. 14,556 total confirmed infected, 305 dead. These numbers are way underreported. Keep calm. It's boom time. Big temperature changes ahead as cold front pushes eastward next week. Now, we reported on this before the mainstream, and we're sticking with our guns. At a glance, temperatures will be well above average across most of the, most of the lower 48 this weekend. Below average temperatures will return to the west early week and move east. As it pushes eastward, a cold front will bring big temperature drops in some areas. Temperatures will rebound closer to average late next week in the east as snow piles up and we're going to get to those models shortly grand forks crews have already removed a winter's worth of snow and winter's just getting started in grand forks it's true during a usual winter the grand forks street department crews will remove between 3,000 and 5,000 truckloads of snow in the last eight weeks they've removed about 5,000 truckloads of snow and it's not slowing down anytime soon it's a constant roundabout between snowfall and maintenance and snowfall and maintenance and snowfall and maintenance and then snowfall and maintenance. More snowfall and maintenance coming. An amazing amount of snow in the Olympic snowpack above normal at the end of January. Now at the end of December, this was barely at 40%. And now it's back. As we predicted, heavy precipitation in January bolstered a once diminutive Olympic mountain snowpack. Now, as the alarmists were holding on to this last bastion uh, of alarmism, we stuck with our guns and used scientific facts and our predictive powers to get you out of the neck of woods before it actually happened. And here it is, the facts. Snowpack is 120% of normal in the Olympics as of Thursday, January 30th, up 48% on New Year's Day. What did we say? Well, sounds like the Oppenheimer Ranch Project might know what they're talking about. In fact, there's almost, there's very few predictions that we have ever made anyway that have not come true. By the way, storm bringing heavy rain to the northwest, snow to impact the Cascades as well as flash flooding and other nightmares. Golfers played in the snow for the Chili Golf Open in Iowa. <laughs> yep, there's a first for everything. Storm could drop a foot of snow on central Wyoming. I'm sure they're bumming. A foot of snow could blanket central Wyoming when a storm sweeps over the region beginning Sunday evening, the National Weather Service reported. Many other people could be picking up snow. The snow, potentially the heaviest in a roughly two months, is forecast to fall through Monday night. The National Weather Service office in Riverton has issued winter storm warning for significant portions of Washington. The forecast released Saturday estimated 6 to 12 inches could drop on Casper with 18 inches in the Casper Mountains. Up to 13 inches is forecasted for neighboring Johnson County. Riverton could get 12 to 18. And we're looking at 3 to 6 as the snow piles up in my region. Snowstorm aims for the Rockies for the first few days of February. A pattern change will bring wintry weather across interior parts of the West in the coming days. The latest storm to hit the Northwest is expected to dive southwestward into the Rockies before the end of the weekend, kicking off in our region by as late as Monday night. So you can see how it's moving. 8 p.m. Sunday, here's the front. 8 a.m. Monday, there it is. And you're 8 p.m. Monday right down in our region. Snow will start late in the day on Sunday across parts of Idaho, northwestern Wyoming, and northern Nevada, and then spread across southeastward through Sunday, which will be a fun day if you want to sled or ski in my region. There's your snowfall outlook. Sunday night through Monday morning, AccuWeather local storm max predicting 30 inches, probably in that Casper region. Hello, Wyoming. And heavy snow through the upper uh, elevations in Colorado. So there you go. Snow is going to continue pouring down and increase as we enter February. Pockets of heavy snow for your Sunday. And this is in Montana, so you're going to be getting some light to moderate snow there as well. All over the West. Let's check the models. Here's your Sunday through Monday. And you can see that snow moving its way south and east right there through your Monday. 
<clears throat> and then it's going to pick up in the upper Midwest, bringing a swath of snow to the Northeast, which will end. <clears throat> Here's your weekend. Next weekend is going to be a big one for the Northeast. And then another system will bury that and another system on top of that. How do you like them marbles? Them's a some marbles. Lots of snow predicted moving forward. Wild weekend UK weather forecast. Snow and 60 mile per hour winds to hit the weekend as icy rain sweeps across England. Met office warns. Now the Met office is warming that it'd be chilly and the knickers would be in a bunch. A weekend of misery is set to bring powerful winds across snow to the UK. On Saturday, it will be dry in much of the south, but across the north there will be outbreaks of rain, especially in Northern Ireland and Scotland. And then the tippy touch of snow comes. Temps around 9 to 10 C in the south, no more than 7 C to 9 C in the north. However, by Sunday, temperatures will struggle to hit double digits as parts of Scotland will likely see snow. Rain and wind will push from the south and head north on Sunday, making it a wet and windy day. John Griffin, a senior operational meteorologist at the Met Office, has told the Sun Online areas of rain will spread from the south to the north and the north to the south. There will be hill snow across Scotland in the afternoon. Currently, there is some uncertainty about how it will get there. But there is not uncertainty about what the models look like moving past this storm. Wait till you see it. So here you see that little bit of snow they're calling for. But next weekend, look at this system moving in from the east. Yes. The second week of February will be a record February for the UK as record snows fall on the region. It's anyone's guess how deep it will get and how much misery will be impacted. But there will be record snows in the Alps and across every region on the other side of the pond. We're looking at heavy totals in Turkey, heavy totals moving through southern regions of the Bolshevik regions and the Alps. And take a look, we're only 11 days out and that is showing almost a half a meter in many areas in northern UK. So a large system is moving in, not this weekend, but next weekend for the UK, and we're going to be following it. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Quite a nice boomer. 5.6 kicking off in Guatemala and Puerto Rico is on the increase. Now, bad news for these uh, earthquakes because the earthquakes in question are not happening where the initial outshocks are happening. They're happening in the Puerto Rican trench. This is the area that could set off a tsunami that will kill everyone in Florida. If a magnitude 7 kicks off here because of these pre-shocks, oh my. So people in Florida should be very vigilant about what's happening here in this region of Puerto Rico. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we did an entire video where we did three-dimensional modeling and a drive-by through the Puerto Rican trench and why earthquakes on this side of Puerto Rico only are worrisome about people on Puerto Rico, but earthquakes on this side in the Puerto Rican trench could kick off a submarine landslide called a turbidite, which would essentially create a hellish tsunami that would move directly, yes, wait for it, towards Florida and across the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and, and basically hit the entire east coast of Florida. So keep a close eye there. Etna volcano eruption news Mild to moderate summit activity continues as the volcano, in particular the Strombolian activity from the inner crater cone inside the Bongyang Central Summit Crater has resumed and is looking quite fantastic. Look at this Strombolian eruption from Etna's Voranj yesterday evening. I hope I didn't trash that word too much. Now, Activity from the inner crater has resumed during the past days and sometimes produces impressive fireworks of incandescent lava being thrown much higher than the crater rim. This activity started on 12 September and over the months constructed a new cinder cone growing inside the crater. At the moment, the activity seems to be stable. There are no significant variations in volcanic tremor, suggesting it might cease or increase soon. It's anyone's guess. We predicted that there will be bad things coming from this volcano in the near future. Mauna Loa Watch, Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Etna on the list, Fuego, Popo, Ducono, Carinci, and Rincon. You want to check it out? Links will be below. Do your own homework. We can only do so much. There's very limited time. 14,549 confirmed infected by the novel coronavirus. 305 now dead. As the numbers increase, there is an uptick 
Yes, in cases over the last 24 hours. Now remember, these are delayed 48 hours, which means that we're probably looking at 50,000 to 75,000 officially uh, infected, but probably more like 200,000 really infected. And these numbers are not slowing, they're speeding up, which is very bad news for the rest of the world because the next country on the crosshairs, in my mind, in my eyes, is Australia. They're doing very little to contain this virus. Across China, more than 300 people now are dead from the coronavirus. That number is now almost 350. And the eighth U.S. coronavirus case is a college Boston student. Unfortunately, we have more coronavirus here in the U.S. New report on the first U.S. case of novel coronavirus. Details mild symptoms followed by pneumonia. The first person to get the novel coronavirus in the U.S. has supposedly recovered in nine days. Their uh, temperature during their fever reached 208 degrees. You can look at all the statistics down here at figure two, where I'm drawing your attention. You can see the maximum of their, their fever was about 203 degrees here on the fifth day. No, it was actually on the seventh day. That was the max temp around 203, and then the temperature rapidly dropped off after they were given an experimental drug when pneumonia showed up in their lungs around day seven. So there is an experimental drug that is being used that has uh, literally cured this patient. And let me see if I can find the name of that drug. We're have a provincial guidance. CD staff need the patient. Specimens collected. Okay. Well, we don't have the name of that drug right now, but if you read the article, and I'm not going to waste your time doing that, you're going to find that information in there. They were given an experimental pneumonia drug. It essentially stopped the virus from spreading, and they are, their temperature has dropped off, and they're now being monitored. So that person officially recovered in the U.S., and the paper will be linked below. Philippines reports its first, first death due to coronavirus outside China. The first death outside of China has occurred, and it was in the Philippines. 137,600 are under observation in China, and it's just it's getting out of hand. If you haven't picked it up, coronavirus fears lead nurses to threaten strike in Hong Kong if borders aren't shut. Why should they be put at risk when the government is not protecting them? Period. Thousands of Australians have been exposed to the coronavirus as 167 flights and almost 50,000 passengers continue to arrive weekly from China and not a single one are quarantined. And these people are giving it to five additional people. So we're looking at a quarter of a million people with coronavirus in Australia in the coming weeks. Based on this information, unless it's false, which it is not, we checked these numbers and these are the numbers and the flights coming into Australia. And after the outbreak was declared a global emergency, what in the world is Australia doing? The whole country burned. Now you want everyone to die of a virus? I mean, get your act together. Hello? It's very disheartening what's happening. Coronavirus contains HIV insertions, stoking fears over artificially created bioweapon. Well, while this is not proven or peer reviewed, any of this information, the information is coming from legitimate scientists who are putting their career on the line and their life on the line for that matter, in my opinion. So read what Zero Hedge has to say about it. We reported on this yesterday. And we were demonetized. Every time we mentioned coronavirus or put facts in the update, demonetized. So there will be no, none of that in the title anymore. Al Gore's a, a bore. But I digress. Global science team on red alert as Arctic lands grow greener. We reported on this yesterday, the greening of the planet because of it's all your fault. Guys, that's the one good thing you're doing. You're greening the planet. And bad news for alarmists, official data reveals Arctic sea ice is once again growing. Once again, it never stopped growing. It was ebbing and flowing. But according to official government data, the National Snow and Ice Data Center at the NSIDC, the number one alarmist uh, affiliated group in the, on the planet, ice is once again growing with 2020 levels exceeding eight out of the 10 previous years. 
And that's for ice extent. That's the lateral extent of the ice. The biggest ice in a decade in extent and thickness is approaching multi-decadal norms. So we have the widest extent and the thickest ice in decades. That's, that's some scary knowledge. New report in the first case of novel coronavirus details mild symptoms followed by pneumonia. Paper link below. Ice extent is exceeding, is at a maximum for the last decade. And Kazakhstan's January snow totals eclipse all time records set back for five decades, approaching six decades. A record breaking 10 plus day blizzard in the Kazakh capital of Nir Sultan Altana is persisting with locals reportedly outraged by the local authorities' response or non response. Guys, be prepared. It's coming, and it'll catch you off guard, especially if you don't have food. 2.5 gigatons of ice built today on the Greenland Glacier. Not a single drop lost since back in September. Nothing but ice gain, and we're headed back up into record territory in the coming weeks. Wait till you see the numbers that we will report on. Not everyone's happy about the EPA's review of glyphosate. Especially the people that thought they were going to uh, get money, get paid, because they got cancer from this corrupt multinational corporation. But the EPA announced that it has concluded its regulatory review of glyphosate. And guess what they say? It's safe. Yes, it's fine. If you use glyphosate as directed, there can be no harm. The only problem is not a single farmer is using it as directed. Not a single, single regulator is testing for it as being used as directed. And they're sp spraying glyphosate on everything, which is why it's in all breast milk, in all nursing mothers worldwide. It's in all homeless people's blood. And it's in all the food you eat in the center of the supermarket that is packaged in a box or a bag, period. If this is new news for you, I don't know where you've been for the last five years. But the EPA has now announced that the poisonous food that's being sold in supermarkets that cause cancer does not cause cancer. I don't know why that would upset anyone. Now, what is upsetting is about the facts of the wildfire in Canberra where our friend Giles happening. Firefighters battle ACT, bushfire as it happened. And you just saw it. Links will be below. U.S. spy satellite being stalked by Russian spacecraft in Earth's orbit. Space trackers suggest that the Russian device is up to some snooping. What do you think? Well, I think World War III is just months away. The way the coronavirus is rolling out, the stock market is tumbling, silver is rising, cryptos are rising. Commodities like masks and food supplies are going to quickly start to run out. Long-term term food storage companies like My Patriot Supply and others have run out of stock. Bullets, be beans, rice, band-aids, go get it. And lots of seeds start sprouting. A new form of northern lights discovered in Finland. The third new type of northern lights in three years. We have white aurora. We have Steve. And now, there are aurora aficionados gathering to discuss subjects like space, space weather forecasting and new types of aurora. <clears throat> Among its members, Mima Plamroth. She's a physicist and professor at the University of Helsinki, where she leads a research group that studies the space weather that causes auroral emissions. Namely, the Birkeland Current that enters the North Pole. When members of the group posted photos of auroras they'd seen and wanting to learn more, Palm Roth would often reply with the aurora's type and scientific explanation for what type of gas or um, element is being ionized in the atmosphere or ionosphere to create the colors. But even after the book came out, some questions remain unanswered. A few of the citizens' photos showed a form of aurora that didn't fit in any of the known categories. It had a green horizontal waves running in parallel. It's undulations reminding some observers of sand formations, and it was christened the dunes. 
That's like, it's like idiots following idiots. I mean, what's the name? What will we name it? We don't care what it means. We just need a good name. Persisting and spreading contrails have been known as early as the 1970s. Nothing to do with geoengineering. Everything to do with cosmic rays. And if you're still some of the few people that I haven't blocked that keep going on and on about contrails and cross and planes are crossing, you haven't spent a second learning about the science. So I'm through with you. And you will be blocked. There is geoengineering going on at a massive scale and none of it you're witnessing. It's happening up in the, yeah, the stratosphere, well above the visibility of planes flying. The limited amount of geoengineering happening down at the surface, which is called cloud seeding, is not coming from commercial jets. It's coming from smaller planes or launched by rockets. Please learn the science of geoengineering. Stop watching Dane Wigington and other, any other geoengineering fraud that says that everything that comes out of a plane is a covert plan to kill you. Because you just look, at, you just look stupid. And learn about cosmic rays. Go back to the basics. Here's the 2017 paper, which explained why in 1979, they started seeing persistent contrails that spread across the whole sky and created nano haze, which has nothing to do with geoengineering or, or trying to kill you and has everything to do with the new cosmogenic environment you live in. God, why, I don't know why people want to wear tinfoil hats on purpose with bad information. That's just stupid. Get the facts. The hat that I wear has nothing to do with tinfoil. It has everything to do with electromagnetic protection. 5G. And the fact that I'm sitting next to modems and other shit that are irradiating me. Just not my brain. This does not protect from cosmic rays. There is no protection from cosmic rays. They go through the earth. Yet none of you want to take five minutes to learn the science. You just want to go, bah, 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 bah. we're all going to die. Coronavirus, chemtrails, harp. Ah. And, and you people that are spouting that are going to die because you certainly aren't preparing for the facts. You don't know how to grow food. You just know how to look up and open up your little shade in your window and be like, oh my God, oh my God, they're spraying. Yet you don't care about self-sufficiency, growing your own food, wildcrafting, hunting, harvesting, learning to get off of the teat of the globalists. You just stay there and you go to the mini mart and you eat processed food and you get diabetes and you kill yourself. And you're like, why? Why did this happen? On Saturn's moon Titan, living cells may be very different from the fat asses eating Cheetos on Earth. Can you imagine that? It's like breakthrough information. If you want to know how to survive and thrive, come check out our preparedness store. I just spent a lot of time adding many important products to the survival supplements. Ones that will fight SARS. Yep. Sudden acute respiratory syndrome. Like the bat SARS that's killing everyone right now. And that includes Pure Planet Red Marine Algae Extract. And Himalaya Organic Licorice Root. Both are proven antivirulence for SARS. We also have C60, Ormus, Bentonite Clay, Super Greens, Perfect Foods, Shungite, and more. All the products in here have been tested by us, and we use them including the Compact Combo 2 Colloidal Silver Generator. Many people are looking to buy colloidal silver. Why would you spend $20 on a little jar when for $89, you can get an industrial version that if you hook up one silver coin to the two terminals, will make a 10,000 gallons of colloidal silver for the rest of your life. Make your own colloidal silver because you're going to have to hand it out to your neighbors too unless you want them to be burying them in your property. Let's survive and thrive together. Let's learn about the scientific facts of our new cosmogenic environment. Let's stop worrying about false flags and fake narratives like harp and chemtrails and start 
invoking solutions, like growing food, bringing people into your realm that are like-minded, that want to help you survive and thrive as the markets collapse, as people get sick from coronavirus, as you're priced out of all the preparedness products that you do not have and the knowledge that you don't know. If the grid goes down, how many books do you have on hand? I think Lee and I have over 10,000 and most of them, yes, are scientific textbooks that will help us grow food and learn about all the things that we're not quite so aware of. So we're hedging our bets. Are you? Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing and now is the time to keep calm, be practical and start learning about solutions on how to survive and thrive in the coming times. You need like-minded people. You need helpers. You need friends. You need compadres. And you need to start implementing these practical solutions now. You need to be buying seeds, growing food in your house, pre-sprouting so you have extended your growing season. But I sound like a broken record because I've been saying this every day for years and very few people are reacting. I imagine 25% of our viewers are slightly prepared and are ready and they will join us, but we can't implore the rest of you to do it. If you want to continue to make sassy comments below on how stupid we are and how stupid the people we interview are, you're the first to die, by the way. You're the first to get taken out. Someone said, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just going to take what I want. If you think you're going to take what you want from me, you'll be part of that pile of bodies in the front yard. Be safe. We love you.